When we rise in vibration, everything changes. How we integrate and process transformation can become more efficient and smoother. Not to mention that so much more than we thought can shift very quickly with much less intention or effort on our part. In this episode, we're discussing how integration and reorganization can change as your frequency resonance rises, what to watch out for with old stories of how you process, and how to not limit the positive change that happens as your vibration or frequency resonance uplevels. And after the discussion, we get to the most important part. The group frequency calibration associated with this episode is where the frequency work happens and where change actually occurs. So be sure to listen to that. Without releasing distortion patterns targeted by the GFC, the change you want will be more difficult to attain because you haven't addressed the root of the issue. If you know someone who could use help with this, please share this video with them. My name is Karen Chong, and today in Mastering Your World Frequencies, we're discussing Detox 2.0, Upleveled Integration. So today we're talking about reorganization of detox or the reorganization that is created by detox. Yeah. So I think in, a, in our, our general parlance of spherical luminosity, we talk about the period where there is integration and reorganization as detox. And it's kind of become this odd story that people can attach to mm -hmm. and that they have to experience a certain kind of suffering or a certain kind of heaviness or a certain kind of you know, physical discomfort or whatever, which can happen. But there's something happening in terms of the work, in terms of everything rising in its frequency resonance. And what I'm noticing is something else is happening. It's not just a detox, which is like, you know, you think of it as kind of horrible. You're purging something you don't want. Mm -hmm. There's actually more that can happen in your life other than just this like horrible, like releasing of things that didn't serve you. Mm -hmm. and, and when you're talking about the reorganization of this, this is, we're talking about typically after we've done like some intense frequency work. Yeah. We're not just talking like a sporadic, oh, I'm having a moment of, but we're talking specifically for the work that we do yes. in spherical luminosity. Yes. Right? Yeah. And it can happen, like you said. So for some people, this reorganization can happen after one group frequency calibration because mm -hmm. it's such a big shift for them. Yeah. Right? Just imagine back to when you first started or even I first started. And the first time I heard a group frequency calibration and experienced frequency work, my life started to change. And it first felt like it was internal. And then I started seeing things happening in my external world, too. And that was a reorganization that happened from one listening, you know? But it can also happen after a retreat, or it can happen after a big online class, or it can happen after anything that's a sig significant change in your frequency resonance, reorganization can happen. Right, because I was gonna ask you some specific questions related to it. Yeah. Because oftentimes, I've noticed, even now to this day, yeah. I can be like a week down the line, and then I suddenly realize, Oh, wait, oh, that's what's happening. It's, I don't like to call it detox now, actually. Yes. It's quite interesting. Shifting yeah. is yeah. what I'm calling it, you know. Exactly. I'm reorganizing reorgan something. Yes. At so many levels. Yes. That even when I look at my outward life. Yeah. Just simple as coming home, looking at my wardrobe, I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> what? <laughs> Why have I got that? You know. That's how, how I recognize yeah, it, because yeah. that was my question. So how do we recognize that we've done the work, Yeah, something internally That's doesn't true. feel so comfortable, Yeah, or maybe it just is like, oh, uh, yeah. like that, yeah. I can't find the words for it. Yeah. So how do we recognize it? When you, where's, the, where's the little clues that, okay, we are reorganizing? Shifting, yeah, yeah. reorganizing. So I just want to back up into why the reorganization happens, and then I'm going to totally answer your question. Okay. So the reorganization happens at the physical, emotional, mental level because everything has shifted on the frequency level. So yeah. I think a lot of people make the mistake that what we do in the physical world then shifts how you are in the spirit world. It's actually completely the opposite. What you do in terms of your frequency resonance, the more your frequency resonance rises, then your physical reality mirrors that. It reorganizes around who you are at frequency level. So when you do a big thing, whether it's a retreat or an online event or maybe your first GFC or whatever the heck it is for you, 
what happens is the shift is so big on frequency level, meaning you jump in your resonance or you jump in your vibration so much, your physical world starts to go like, whoa, what just happened? It can't stay the same because it's a reflection of what's happening on spirit level. So how can you tell that things are changing? So it can be really simple, like you say, like everything in your wardrobe that you used to have, you're like, I don't want any of it. I hate it all. You know, it's like a god sort of nightmare, you know, when their wives come home. That's what happened to Chris once. I remember I came, I can't remember what happened, but all of a sudden it was like, I don't know what, at like 11 o'clock at night. And I'm, he's like, what are you doing? I'm like going through my closet. And there's like piles <laughs> for purging and for like the goodwill and all this stuff. And he's just like, it's 11 o'clock at night. And you're like, don't like bananas. But, you know, <laughs> things like this will happen. Or for example, you'll hate the way, um, your house looks to some degree, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So you're like, okay, I, I, I had this whole decor scheme and I, it doesn't reflect who I am anymore. So people will change it, for example, or they'll want to paint a room or they'll want to, I don't know, like this mess that they've had for a long time that they've been ignoring for like years now, all of a sudden needs to get sorted right now, you know? Or um, what could be is like, it could change also just in terms of how you are with your physical body. It's like, I need to change the way I eat now. I, I, I've, I've kind of like been dealing with it for a while and I've kind of been mostly okay and somewhat crappy and I, it's not tolerable to me anymore. Or um, like you'll notice things like um, even if you didn't hate, if you hated exercise before, now all of a sudden you feel like you want to more. Do you see anything, things like this or you'll crave different activities sometimes. You'll be like, you know, I just feel like I need to go out and walk more outside. Like I just need to feel more connected and more grounded or whatever the thing is for mm -hmm. you. Or, you or know, all of the above. Or all of the above. Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, like I haven't, so for example, if you're like my husband, Chris, he's like, I haven't ridden my motorcycle for a ride for a long time. And now it's like, I need to get back on the bike for whatever reason, he doesn't, like, you know, it's just been a while since he's been doing this activity that he loved. And then all of a sudden it's like, I've got to get back on there and go explore something new. So that, all of these things, which look like new shifts or new, or perhaps even old things with a twist, mm -hmm. start to come up. And you kind of want to involve yourself in doing those things. Uh -huh. Okay, because, okay, so that's, that to me sounds like the reorganizing. Yeah. That sounds like the nice part. Yes. For the whole thing. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, you know, I do remember the early days and I don't necessarily remember the rise in uh, frequency resonance, mm -hmm. but I do remember shaking off the density. Yes. And the relief of that. Yes. And then this kind of wobble that happened yeah. internally with that. And sometimes it was uncomfortable. Oh, very. Right? Can be. And, yeah. and I still don't recognize when it changed to, okay, it's not uncomfortable anymore. It's just a reorganization. Yeah. It, yeah. It's strange. Yeah, it's strange. Yeah. Well, that's the thing about frequency work. It's so subtle because it happens at the frequency level. So you are changing your identity because part of what reorganizes is who you think you are mm. and how you feel in the world and how you feel about life and how you view things and what's important to you. Now, for some people, that sounds terrifying because they're like, oh, my God, I really love the way that my life is. and I really love the way my relationships are and the way my house is and all that stuff. So it's change for some people can sound really scary. Mm. And what I'll say is that for somebody who used to be a control freak and wanted everything to be a certain way, that it that changes too. You know mm. what I mean? Like that identity of needing to control everything and have everything be in place and in order and know exactly what was coming and all that sort of stuff. What's odd without really recognizing or realizing it's happening as you rise in your resonance, as you release the distortion, the need for control, the need to have everything like ordered, for example, for me, that's what I was, it, you almost don't even notice it's happened mm -hmm. in a way. It's, it sounds really weird. Like, how could you not notice that that was the way it was? But it, it kind of like your normal just shifts. Yeah. And you kind of start to become a different version of yourself and not kind of, you do become without really even realizing it until someone might even point it out to you. Like, hey, do you notice you don't like for me, it was like spreadsheet anymore. You're not always constantly checking in with Chris to make sure he's okay. You're not, you know, whatever, fill in the blank. You know what I mean? Like, like spastically always vacuuming all the time or whatever the thing is that, you know, I used to do. Like, right, I just, 
you kind of forget that you even used to do those things. Yeah, there's something more important. Right? Yeah, exactly. And I'd, that's what I was going to ask you about as well. Because there will be people watching it that maybe just started this mm -hmm. journey. Yeah. And the, I think sometimes, it, I think my question is around attachment to the story of detox. Yes, very much Because so. I think oftentimes you hear about this detox and it's detox. And so you associate every uncomfortable feeling with it's detox. Mm -hmm. When actually it might not even be detox. <laughs> yeah. It could just be you need to stop eating or drinking, let's say. You need to stop drinking alcohol. Yes. This is not detox now. This is called a hangover. You know, <laughs> yes, exactly. Something like that. Yeah. But there's like an attachment to um, detox as well in this work, I noticed. Yes. And, and it's how do we, because part of the moving on is surrendering, I think, mm -hmm. that, okay, something's happening after I've done this big amount of work. Yeah. We can call it detox yeah. or we can leave it wide open and be open to the fact that it's shifting and yeah. reorganizing. All right, there's a few bumpy, yeah. uncomfortable bits, but let's not call it detox now. Yes. Let's just call it upscaling. Yeah. Or up leveling. Up leveling. Re reorganizing, because that's what's happening. Yeah. You literally are pitching out the old stuff that no longer serves you. Yeah. And the thing is, like you said, part of that process is to see the patterns that you've done in the past uh -huh. that have limited you, that no longer serve you, uh -huh. that are heavy for you that I guess it's part of the reorganization process because it's about awareness. Yeah. But it's to not hang your hat on that, meaning like to excuse whatever you're experiencing and to not take personal responsibility because it's just quote unquote detox mm -hmm. and you're powerless to do anything about it because it's the reorganization that's happening on the physical level. Yeah. Really, it's about awareness of what's happening and being like, oh, wow, I'm seeing that I've been excusing this behavior that's limiting me for a while and I haven't really looked at it because yes. I don't want to, but I've been calling it detox instead. But instead to be like, okay, well, if we just call this reorganization, when you reorganize things, typically you reorganize things because what the former organization pattern was no longer serves you mm -hmm. or is inefficient in some way or isn't working for you. Or you see it now yeah, for what it is, it is and it isn't serving you to your highest good. Exactly. And I was going to come back to that and say, well, if we don't hang on to this whole concept of detox and, and we focus on the work, mm -hmm. confirming the removal, mm -hmm. the uh, six core essentials. essentials. Mastery momentum. Exactly, mastery momentum. If you just keep on focusing on that, mm -hmm. then I think that's what happened for me because mm -hmm. I knew it, I didn't like the detox. No, because <laughs> no, it, kind of, it can feel really uncomfortable. And you kind of have to look at your life and go, oh, shit, yeah. this is me. Yes, you know? exactly. Yeah. Right? And so I just threw myself into that, you know, confirming the removal and then the six core essentials, mastering my mental because it was the, the only thing that helped me keep this resonance buoyant mm -hmm. and propel myself forward. Yeah. And I think that's why now I can view it as oh, it's just a reorganization. Yeah. Right? Yes. Because you mean you provided the tools. Yes. And coming back to the point, do you want to stay in detox? Yeah. Do you want this to become an identity thing? Yeah. And for some people, the other thing about the idea of detox that we're moving away from is the speed at which we're changing is very fast. Mm -hmm. So if you hang on to anything, including detox, because some people actually want to experience detox because it confirms to them that something has happened. Uh, yeah. I found that happens. Mm -hmm. And I totally understand that. Like yeah. you get it, you're like, okay, I can tell something's happening because I'm in this pattern of discomfort that I've been in before, yeah. however it looks to you. But the thing is, if we attach even to that, that's just your mind seeking certainty that something has actually happened yeah. rather than feeling and allowing for something else to change in your life mm -hmm. and to be sort of surprised by it and not need to control it and to be in flow with it and to recognize that sometimes for those of us who are very busy, myself included, that sometimes being still is extremely important mm -hmm. because, you know, in our culture, we're very addicted to moving, 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 moving. Mm -hmm. If we're not, quote unquote, progressing by moving, then something is wrong. But it's funny because the stillness that can happen, you know, in this period of reorganization is really critical. Um, I've noticed even in myself for the bounce in your frequency resonance to be more full, which means, okay, so translate that into totally shift your experience of life and mm -hmm. how you feel about it. Mm -hmm. It's like you need that 
or I shouldn't say you, I need that period sometimes of this stillness because I, I do move a lot in the world and I do do a lot of things. It's a really important period to allow for that re reorganization to ripple out through all of you so you can like sort of reap the reward of all of it. And it's funny because a lot of people, I think, with the idea of detox feel like it needs to be very dramatic. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that the, uh, some people can go into victim mm -hmm. with regards to it. Like, oh, my God, I can't handle it. Someone's got to save me. Mm -hmm. It like can be disempowering because, yeah. you know, you're, you're under the influence of this like effect, which is can be uncomfortable or painful or, or however you want to label it. Mm -hmm. And then they're not powerful enough to shift themselves out of it. It's really interesting. Yeah. You know? Or powerful enough just to be in it, like yes. you say, in the stillness and I'll allow it to just process through. Through. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's it's interesting, like you say, the the intensity of that concept of detox and yet the willingness to perpetuate it. Yes, exactly. Right. We hang on to it. Yeah. yeah. And um I I don't know if it's fear or if it's um, or if it is just an identity thing or like you say it adds value to the work that they've done. Mm -hmm. That we we can't seem to let go of this concept of needing to have it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yes, and that's the whole thing that is changing because reorganization can happen very fast, mm -hmm. relatively speaking. Yeah. Right? So some people are really quick. Like they'll just sleep for a day or a few days or a week, and then it's they've processed it, mm -hmm. or not, I'm not even going to use the word process, come into the fullness of the higher level order of frequency resonance they now are. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And the thing about reorganization is it can happen very quickly. It doesn't have to be this long, prolonged, very dramatic, very suffering, ensconced, you know, experience. Yeah. And it also can change. So I think when we say reorganization, I feel like that's a lot better because it leaves a lot of room for what your experience can be. And it doesn't need to be fixed. Yeah. And it can be something different. And it can be uncomfortable. And it can also be still. And it can also be really this amazing celebration of what you get to experience in your humanness. Mm -hmm. And all of those things can happen at the same time. Oh, I have a great story. Mm. Um, from a client of ours mm -hmm. that has just come back from the Peru trip. Mm -hmm. And before she left, she was uh, teaching. Mm -hmm. I'll not be too specific because, you know, mm -hmm. I don't want to give personal information away. But she was teaching and she was being given a certain hourly rate. Mm -hmm. She goes to Peru and she totally went into the flow and just surrendered mm -hmm. from, from strength, mm -hmm. you know, managed herself in the group dynamics went with the, um, the way the mastermind came together and raised that frequency resonance that we had magic, yeah. literally. And when she got back to the same place that she was teaching, to the same people that she was teaching, they offered her three times the hour hourly rate. She didn't do anything different. She just came back from Peru. Yeah. She, she wrote in, she was like, you'll never believe what's happened. I'm like, yes, I would. Yeah, but, you know. yeah exactly. It was really amazing. Yeah. And, and then she's got another offer to do another you know, class. And I was like, wow, this That's is amazing. amazing. Yeah. And the thing is, it's, it's not like she signed up for the Peru retreat wanting a specific no. outcome. She just did the work. Her frequency resonance jumped and her entire physical reality starts to reorganize around her. Yeah. So that's the amazing part. And it doesn't have to be hard. No. Like, and that's why I want to move away from this word detox into reorganization, because it doesn't have to be hard, and it doesn't have to be suffering, and it doesn't have to be, you know, this terrible experience. And it also requires a level of personal responsibility to yeah. see your stuff so you can chuck the stuff that no longer serves you as you reorganize to a higher vibrational order of presence. Exactly. <laughs> and I think that's the key, right? Yeah. Even if it is a little bit hard or... Yeah feels hard, it will pass. It will pass. As long as you keep doing the work, mm -hmm. it's going to pass. I agree. Right? And for some people, it will be hard because what you need to release can be something that is heavy with you and that you haven't seen for a while and you really want to get rid of this pattern. So for some of us, it, there are moments, even it doesn't really matter what your frequency resonance is. If it's something old and deep and heavy and you're releasing it, 
it's not going to feel spectacular. It, it can feel kind of crappy. Mm -hmm. But the thing is to be like, okay, it feels crappy in this moment, and I have tools, and I can raise my frequency resonance, yep. and it will reorganize, and I will be mindful of my my own resonance as it shifts and changes because I can, because I've gained the internal strength to be able to do it. So even if it's, if it's fast and instantaneous, or if it's challenging for you, this process of reorganization can be really amazing, not only just in the process, but also in the effect. Yeah, there's a gift in it, yeah, right? Because absolutely. you get to see more of yourself. Absolutely. And how you are rendering in this reality. Yeah. And that, like, I think that's what makes it easier for me. Yeah. It's, okay, I'm going to have this, it's going to happen, yeah. and it's probably not going to be that nice, it might feel yucky, but I understand there's a huge gift coming with this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. And for those of you who want to experience greater reorganization, it requires more momentum. So if you'd like more momentum, I highly encourage you to listen to the group frequency calibration meditation associated with this episode so you can gain more momentum and go more with the flow. We're about to start the group frequency calibration, or GFC, where we actually do the frequency work and where change is catalyzed. To get to the GFC, click on the square that'll appear to the right or the link in the description below. It's time to bring in a new experience, a new consciousness, and a new world. Let's rise together.